Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. It's Johnny Tsunami. Jonathan Daniel Masters, Grip Shover. Wanted to do, uh, talk some shop. Want to talk a little revolution. I got a few quotes for you right in the very beginning. If children live with humiliation, they learn to ridicule. If children live with hostility, they learn to fight. If children live with shame, they learn to feel guilty. If children live under oppression, they learn to be tyrannical. If children live with encouragement, they learn ambition. If children live with praise, they learn confidence. If children live with respect, they learn honor. If children learn, live with approval, they learn dignity. If children live with freedom, they learn to be independent. That was uh, from the Nonviolent Parenting uh, Facebook page. Here's one from Native Americans Facebook page. They always have a bunch of cool, bunch of good quotes. They had a real good one actually about men and women. But Cherokee, this is a Cherokee, or this is Chief Crazy Horse. A very great vision is needed, and the man who has it must follow it as the eagle seeks the deepest blue of the sky. A very great vision is needed, and the man who has it must follow it as the eagle seeks the deepest blue of the sky. Chief Crazy Horse. I don't know why I said it. What, it's not Cher I don't know if he's Cherokee or not. The Cherokee saying that I came across. A woman's highest calling is to lead a man to his soul as to unite him with source. A man's highest calling is to protect woman so she is free to walk the earth unharmed. So, that's a Cherokee proverb. Um, I want to uh, read this uh, article by W.E.B. Du Bois in The Nation, October 1956, entitled, Why I Won't Vote, October 20th, 1956. Since I was 21 in 1889, I have in theory followed the voting plan strongly advocated by Sidney Lenz in the nation of August 4th, i.e. voting for a third party even when its chances were hopeless. If the main parties were unsatisfactory or an absence of a third choice, voting for the lesser of two evils. So he's using a third party tactic. That's how W.B. Du Bois is voting. Um, exactly what I'm advocating for here in Louisville. Vote for Jill Stein, 2012, the Green Party candidate for president, and vote for uh, other progressive candidates that are on the ballot. And don't vote for the corporate uh, professional corruptionist. So, uh, my action, however, had to be limited by the candidate's attitude towards Negroes. In my adult life, I've spent 23 years living and teaching in the South where my voting choice was not asked. I was disenfranchised by law or administration in the North. I lived in all 32 years covering eight presidential elections. In 1912, I wanted to support Theodore Roosevelt, but his bull, Morse, bo his bull moose convention dodged the Negro problem, and I tried to help elect Wilson as a liberal Southerner. Under Wilson came the worst attempt at Jim Crow legislation and, Jim and discrimination in civil service that we had experienced since the Civil War. So Woodrow Wilson, who instituted the draft and started the, uh, uh, made us get into World War I, which eventually helped create Hitler, which was Eugene Debs would have tried to stop. Eugene Debs spoke out against World War I and was put in prison for 10 years. Emma Goldman was deported. Woodrow Wilson created the Federal Reserve. Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson changed a lot. He, he messed up a lot. Fucking Woodrow Wilson. All right. In 1916. So again, let's see. Under Wilson came the worst attempt at Jim Crow legislation and discrimination in civil service that we had experienced since the Civil War. So Wilson took it back. He he, he took the race relations backwards. In 1916, I took Hughes as the lesser of two evils. He promised Negroes nothing, and he kept his word. In 1920, I supported Harding because of his promise to liberate Haiti. So Harding was going to liberate Haiti. In 1924, I voted for La Follette, even though, although I knew he could not be elected. So Robert La Follette fighting Bob. In 1928, Negroes faced absolute dilemma. 
Neither Hoover knew nor Smith wanted the Negro vote and both publicly insulted us. I voted for Norman Thomas and the Socialist. Although the Socialists had attempted to Jim Crow uh, Negro members in the South, so I guess recruit Jim Crow ne Negro members in the South. I don't know. Attempted to Jim Crow Negro. Ah, oh, attempted to Jim Crow as a verb. Okay. So the Socialists had tried to segregate black people in the South. In 1932, I voted for Franklin Roosevelt since Hoover was unthinkable and Roosevelt's attitude toward workers most realistic. I was again in the South from 1934 until 1944. Technically, I could vote, but the election in which I could vote was a farce. The real election was the white primary. Retired for age in 1944, I returned to the North and found a party to my liking. In 1948, I voted the progressive ticket for Henry Wallace, and in 1952, for Vincent Hallinan. In 1956, I shall not go to the polls. I have not registered. I believe that democracy has so far disappeared in the United States that no two evils exist. There's but one evil party with two names, and it will be elected despite all I can do or say. There's no third party. On the presidential ballot in a few states, 17 in 1952, a socialist party will appear. Few will hear its appeal because it will have almost no opportunity to take part in the campaign and explain its platform. If a voter organizes or advocates a real third party movement, he may be accused of seeking to overthrow this government by force and violence. Anything he advocates by way of significant reform will be called communist and will of necessity be communist in the sense that it must advocate such things as government ownership of the means of production, government and business, the limitation of private profit, social medicine, government housing and federal aid to education, the total abolition of race bias and the welfare state. These things are on every communist program. These things are the aim of socialism. Any American who advocates them today, no matter how sincerely, stands in danger of losing his job, surrendering his social status, and perhaps landing in jail. The witnesses against him may be liars or insane or criminals. These witnesses need give no proof for their charges and may not even be known or appear in person. They may be in the pay of the United States government. ADAs and liberals are not third parties. They seek to act as tails to kites. But since the kites are self-propelled and radar controlled, tails are quite superfluous and rather silly. <laughs> liberals, you're rather silly. The present administration is carrying on the greatest preparation for war in the history of mankind. Stevenson promises to maintain or increase this effort. The weight of our taxation is unbearable and rests mainly and deliberately on the poor. This administration is dominated and directed by wealth and for the accumulation of wealth. It runs smoothly like a well-organized industry and should do so because industry runs it for the benefit of industry. This is 1956, right? This is all still going on 56 years later. So 56 years ago... America seems identical, identical to how W.E.B. Du Bois was, is describing it. So it runs smoothly like a well-organized industry and should do so because industry runs it for the benefit of itself, of industry. Corporate wealth profits as never before in history. Again, corporations are making a ton of money. They're doing fine. The corporate health is very, very fine. <laughs> Those people are doing okay, just not the homeless or the immigrants. We turn over the national resources to private profit and have few funds left for education, health, or housing. Our crime, especially juvenile crime, is increasing. Its increase is perfectly logical. For a generation, we've been teaching our youth to kill, destroy, steal, and rape in war. How can we expect in peace? What can we expect in peace? We let men take wealth, which is not theirs. If the seizure is legal, we call it high profits. And the profiteers help decide what is legal. If the theft is illegal, the, th the thief can fight it out in court with excellent chances to win if he receives the accolade of the right newspapers. Gambling in home, church, and on the stock market is increasing, and all prices are rising. It costs three times his salary to elect a senator and many millions to elect a president. This money comes from the very corporations, which today are the government which is the definition of fascism, according to FDR and Mussolini, when corporations and government become one. That's why you need a real democracy. You need a political solution. You need politics in order to stop uh, corporations from running roughshod over everybody else. This, in a real democracy, would be enough to turn the party responsible out of power. Yet this we cannot do. The other party has surrendered all party differences in foreign affairs, and foreign affairs are our most important affairs today, 
and take most of our taxes. Even in domestic affairs, how does Stevenson differ from Eisenhower? He uses better English than Dole's. Thank God he has a sly humor, where Eisenhower has none. Beyond this, Stevenson stands on the race question in the South, not, not far from where his godfather Adlai stood 63 years ago, which reconciles him to the South. He has no clear policy on war or preparation for war. So Dole's versus Eisenhower, that's 56. Dole's versus Eisenhower. So, he's, uh, or Stevenson and Eisenhower. So Stevenson has no clear policy on war, preparation for war, on water and flood control, on reduction of taxation, on the welfare state. He wavers on civil rights and his party blocked civil rights in the Senate until Douglas of Illinois admitted that the Democratic Senate would and could stop even the right of senators to vote. Douglas had a right to complain. Three million voters sent him to the Senate to speak for them. His voice was drowned and his voice nullified by Eastland, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee who was elected by 151,000 voters. This is the democracy in the United States which we peddle abroad. Negroes hope to muster 400,000 votes in 1956. Where will they cast them? What have the Republicans done to enforce the education decision of the Supreme Court? 1954, Brown versus Board of Education just happened. What they advertised as fair employment was exactly nothing, and Nixon was just the man to explain it. What has the administration done to rescue Negro workers, the most impoverished group in the nation, half of whom receive less than half the medi median wage of the nation, while the nation sends billions abroad to protect oil investments and help employ slave labor in the Union of South Africa and the Rhodesias? Very well, and the will of uh, the party of Talmadge, Eastland, and Ellender do better than the Republicans if the Negroes return them to office. I have no advice for others in this election. Are you voting Democratic? Well and good. All I ask is why. Are you voting for Eisenhower and his smooth team of bright ghost riders? Again, why? Will your helpless vote? Either way, support or restore democracy to America? Is the refusal to vote in this phony election a council of despair? No, it is dogged hope. It is hoped that if 25 million voters refrained from voting in 1956 because of their own accord and not because of a sly wink from Khrushchev, this might make the American people ask how much longer this dumb farce can proceed without even a whimper of protest. Yet if we protest, off the nation goes to Russia and China. 55 American ministers and philanthropists are asking the Soviet Union to face manfully the doubts and promptings of their conscience. Cannot these do-gooders face their own consciousness? Can they not see that American culture is rotting away, our honesty, our human sympathy, our literature, save what we import from abroad? Our only renew review of literature has wisely dropped literature from its name. Our manners are gone, and the one thing we want to be is rich to show off. Success is measured by income. University education is for income, not culture, and is partially supported by private industry. We're not training poets or musicians, but... Atomic engineers, business is built on successful lying called advertising. We want money in vast amount no matter how we get it. So we have it, and then what? Is the election, is the answer the election of 1956? We can make a sick man president and set him to a job which would strain a man in re robust health. So he dies. And what do we get to lead us? With Stevenson and Nixon and Eisenhower and Eastland? So it's Nixon and Eisenhower. Talking about what he was talking about is a stance on war is no clear policy on war, preparation for war, water flow control. This is all Nixon. So, okay. Um, with Stevenson and Nixon, with Eisenhower and Eastland, we remain in the same mess. I will be no party to it, and that will make little difference. You will take large part and bravely march to the polls, and that also will make no difference. Stop running Russia and giving Chinese advice when we cannot rule ourselves decently. Stop yelling about a democracy we do not have. Democracy is dead in the United States, yet there is still nothing to replace real democracy. Drop, drop the chains, then that bind our brains. Drive the money changers from the seats of the cabinet and the halls of Congress. Call back some faint spirit of Jefferson and Lincoln and win again. We can hold a fair election on real issues. Let's vote, and not till then. Is this impossible? That democracy in America is impossible. W.B. Du Bois, 1956. So, revolution. Viva la revolution, Louisville. Don't vote for any of the main candidates, especially if they're corporate. Jill Stein, 2012. Occupy.